I remember the exact moment I realized I was different. It was sixth grade, last day of school, and we had just gotten off the bus and we were talking about our summer plans. Well, really, they were talking about their summer plans. I was listening because I realized that their experience sounded very different than mine. You see, I was the only one among my crew who was going to camp that summer. I was the only one who had an extensive list of books I was supposed to read. I was the only one who was going to have a real vacation. Now, those are small things, but to me as a sixth grader, it helped me realize that there was something different happening in my life compared with those I was growing up with. It took me a while to figure out why I was so different. But eventually I realized I was the only one growing up in a two-parent household with both parents who had gone to college. I was the only one whose parents were really intentional about the opportunities they presented me with. You see, they viewed the summer as an opportunity not for me to kick it, but as an opportunity for me to expand my horizons. When I realized this, I was not grateful. I didn't, I didn't run home to my parents to say, oh, gosh, thank you so much for the opportunities you were presenting me with. No, I was bitter. No, I was, I was full of shame. Because I didn't want to be different. And I didn't want to have that be why I was different. I knew that I had been given so much that I hadn't earned, while so many who looked just like me had been given so little. You see, growing up in my house, we talked all the time about what college would look like for me. I had a pretty good idea that if I wanted to live in my parents' house, if I wanted to eat their food, wear the clothes they had bought me, let's keep it real, if I wanted to keep breathing, <laughs> right? I was gonna go to college. I was gonna earn a degree. And I was gonna one day make a living doing something meaningful. I learned in those middle school years that those expectations weren't set for so many of those I grew up with. For so many of them, they had to do it on their own. That shame I felt, it turned into frustration. Frustration with a system that allowed so many who were talented and ambitious to fall by the wayside. It led me to question what our society plans to do about it. And eventually, it led me to ask myself, what do I plan to do about it? So I did the one thing that made sense to me. I became a teacher. See, I believe that teachers have the power to serve as a catalyst for change in the lives of the students they serve. I believe that even though we can't guarantee every child has the same opportunities I did as a child, we can ensure that the one system designed to give every kid a fair shake lives up to its building, up to its billing, excuse me. But unfortunately, in many of our schools that serve our neediest children, the adults there expect so very little. Very often, students can go through their entire experience without finding someone who's going to invest in them. Imagine if every child, regardless of where they happen to be born, regardless of what skin color they happen to have, regardless of their past performance, imagine if every child was given what I had as a child incredibly high expectations paired with the support system to help them meet it. 
by the grace of God, I was able to fall in with a group of like-minded people who had created an early college high school specifically with the purpose of helping students from the city of Dayton gain the skills they need to go to and graduate from college, all while accounting for the dignity of the students they served. We believe that we can and must ratchet up the academic expectations of the students we serve, but only when we commit to meeting their needs. If that sounds like challenging work, I can assure you what it is. It's tedious. And it requires a level of accountability from all of the adults involved. You see, in a lot of traditional schools, especially schools that serve our neediest children, you'll hear them say things like, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. What they're saying is that we are responsible as adults for teaching the material. You are responsible as the students for learning the material. And if you don't, that's on you. Well, that kind of thinking leaves capable students to fall by the wayside. They, they often underachieve. They sometimes fail, and worse still, sometimes they drop out. Well, we reject that notion. We believe that you can force a horse to drink water. <laughs> you just got to salt the oats. You see... When you salt the oats, it creates a thirst within the horse that compels it to drink water. In our context, salting the oats means that we are responsible for ensuring every student who walks through our doors is excited and accountable for their learning. It means that we can no longer push away or dismay or dismiss students simply because they have academic, emotional, or behavioral issues. Because when they fail, we fail. It means that we gotta do whatever it takes. That is exactly what my parents did for me and what countless other parents do for their children. And it's precisely what schools must do for kids who don't have that support system at home. You know, my, my boss and mentor, Judy Hennessy, she often says, no one gets to college on their own. And that's true. Everyone who makes it does so in part because of the people around them, their support system. I think back on the richness of my own. I had my parents, I had brothers, grandparents, godparents, coaches, teachers, a lot of folks who loved me and made sure that I didn't stumble along the way. Well, we can't just assume that every child has that naturally occurring, can we? But what if, what if instead of assuming that that's going to happen, we wrap our arms around our students and we work with their parents and community partners to make sure that they have that support system? We decided at our school that that's exactly what we would do. So we began to hire different kinds of teachers, teachers who believed that they had to salt the oats. We looked for teachers who took it personally when their students fail. We looked for teachers who can find joy in the challenges that we face. We looked for teachers who will do whatever it takes to put students first every day. See, in a lot of schools, we are coached to maintain a professional distance from the students that we serve. But that can often serve as a barrier to investing deeply in relationships. Well, we went the other way. We require every teacher serve as a surrogate parent to 15 to 20 students. We work hard to figure out how our kids think. We sit in their living rooms, look them and their families in the eye, and we ask the question, what do I need to know to help you become who you want to be. We study their strengths and their weaknesses. We learn their fears, we learn their hopes. But most importantly, we ask our students to trust us. To trust that our greatest ambition is to see them reach their greatest potential. To hope and help them reach their dreams. And then together, we work to make those dreams a reality. You know, growing up, 
We talked often in my house about the things I should and could be doing to position myself well for college. We went and visited schools, and I very quickly understood exactly what the game was. I knew what ACT score I needed. I knew what GPA I needed. I knew what extracurriculars I needed to do to look good on college applications. But I learned in my high school years that that wasn't the case for so many of the kids in my crew. You see, the way that it goes in high school is that for those who are on a college track, we implicitly learn the expectations of what it means to be a college student. But for those who don't fit into that category, you got to figure it out on your own. So a lot of my friends didn't have the GPA they needed. They didn't take the courses that would help them be successful. They didn't even bother to complete the FAFSA to see what financial aid was available to them. But what if, instead of leaving it up to students to figure out this implicit process, what if we made it explicit and require every student to meet those expectations? Well, that is exactly what we do. Rather than putting students on pre-selected trajectories based on our perceptions of their ability, we instead expect every kid who walks through our doors to demonstrate that they are able to go to college and beyond. So in order to graduate from our, our school, whether you choose to go to college or not, you're going to demonstrate your ability to write on a college level. You're going to go through the college application process. You're going to spend time investigating future career options, and you're going to write a 20-page autobiography. Because we believe that in order to know what you might yet become, you have to understand what you've already overcome. Every child deserves to go to a school where the adults there expect greatness, where every failure of a student is understood to be a failure of the adults who serve them and where no matter where a child happened to be born, no matter their skin color, no matter their past performance, that every child is pushed to reach her absolute greatest potential. I've seen this work over and over for the students who have gone on this journey with us. And I have the pleasure of hearing them talk about how they're proving education changes lives. And they are. Our graduates are finishing college at a rate five times the national average for students in their demographic. They are teachers, they're social workers, policemen, they're nurses, they're parents, they're accountants, they're mentors. They are leaders in our community. I look back some 20 odd years later and I am filled with the gratitude I should have had as a middle schooler. I will be forever grateful to my parents for the sacrifices they made for my brothers and I so that we could reach for the stars. And I'm proud to be different. I'm especially proud to be a part of an organization that believes in doing education differently too. But if I'm being honest with you, I am still plagued by shame. I am ashamed that year after year, so many schools fail to see the beauty and genius of the students they serve. I am ashamed that students continue to be cast aside by the very people who have claimed to be doing what's right. We can do better. And as a society, we have to do better. Let's stop leaving it up to chance, whether a child fails or succeeds. And let's start creating schools that salt the oats. Thank you.